Good morning children. Today in English in class 11, we'll take up this chapter, We are not afraid to die if we can all be together. Now, if by uh, Gordon Cook and Alan East. Now, if we take up the title, first of all, it suggests something to us. And what is it that it suggests? We are not afraid to die. That means it speaks of the fearlessness of the people in the chapter. And if we can all be together, that is as long as the family supports each other. No matter what happens, no matter what challenge we are faced with, no matter what issues we are uh, having, if we are all together, if we support each other, if we are optimistic, we are hopeful, we are determined, we have the willpower to overcome all challenges, everything can be possible. And that is what has been uh, given to us by means of this chapter. We are not afraid to die if we can all be together by Gordon Cook and Alan East. Now, this chapter revolves around uh, the path where the around the world voyage is undertaken by the narrator and his family. It describes his thrilling journey across the sea and their close encounter with death during the voyage. The plot talks about the possible attempts to save their lives in which they finally succeed. So we have the narrator who is a 37 year old businessman. He wanted very, uh, very hard. He wanted, he wished, he dreamt and so did his wife that they wanted to uh, undertake this voyage around the world for which they made plans. And then he, uh, his wife Mary supported him and both of them practiced enough in order to be fully equipped to face the challenges on the way. Then there were two crewmen, Larry Vigil and Herb Siegler, who joined them at Cape Town so that they, they would have some support on the way. And then they had two children, Suzanne and Jonathan, the son. So we, uh, this is how we take up the lesson now. In July 1976, my, Mary, my wife, sorry, Mary, son Jonathan, six years old, that is, daughter Suzanne, seven, and I set sail from Plymouth, England. So in the month of July, in the year 1976, the narrator with his wife, Mary, their son, Jonathan, who was six years old, daughter Suzanne, who was seven years old. So the family set sail. That meant they started the sea voyage from Plymouth in England to duplicate the, wo the world voyage made 200 years earlier by Captain James Cook. So, the voyages, that is a long journey by sea. So, to duplicate means to repeat. So, what had been, what, what Captain James Cook had succeeded in 200 years ago, that he had undertaken around the world voyage. So, that is what the couple also wished to do that. So, that is how they set, set off in their boat, uh, set off sailing in the boat in the month of July in 1976. For the longest time, ever since that is, ever since that they could recall and remember, Mary and I, that is the narrator, a 37-year-old businessman, the narrator was a businessman and he was about 37 years old, had dreamt of sailing in the wake of the famous explorer. That is, had dreamt of sailing. That means it was a dream for them. It was an ardent wish, an ardent desire, a very strong wish in, 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 to follow what had been done, what had been accomplished by Captain James Cook 200 years ago. And for the past 16 years, and it just they did not just let it remain as a dream. They worked, they made an effort, they endeavor for the last 16 years. That means they practiced sailing for the last 16 years. We had spent all our leisure time. Leisure, that is the, that is a time uh, which is used for our relaxation or for enjoyment. So whatever leisure time that they had, whatever time that they had for where otherwise they would have relaxed or enjoyed, they went sailing, honing our seafaring skills in British waters. Honing means sharpening, to improve, to be extremely good sailors, our seafaring skills, that is, the, the travel by sea. They were going to undertake a journey around the world 
this would take them around three years it was planned to be so so they had to be fully equipped and be prepared to sail in all kinds of weather conditions so seafaring skills that means when you need the you uh, need, need some special abilities or training or practice in order to undertake this journey that they had decided upon so this is how so the last 16 years that they had spent whatever time that they were free whenever they were free they went sailing trying to improve and trying to become perfect in a, a sailing the, so that if they faced any difficulty on the way they would be able to handle it they would be able to cope with it and for this they had a specially designed boat uh, which was built by professionals. Our boat wave walker, they call their boat wave walker. And he describes now a 23 meter, no, 30 ton wooden hulled beauty had been professionally built so that it would be durable enough, it would be strong enough to face all kinds of weather conditions um, when they set off sailing. And we had spent months fitting it out. Whatever that they would need, whatever equipment they had it all in plenty so that they would not have any problem on the way. So, and testing it in the roughest weather we could find. So, it was a professionally uh, built boat and they practiced in this boat so that when even when the uh, conditions were the worst, when there were high seas and strong winds blowing, that time also they practiced sailing so that they would not have any difficulty once they set off sail. The first leg of a planned three year, that is the first leg, that means the first part, the initial part of a planned three year, that meant that the voyage would take them, the voyage that is the journey by sea, that it would take them three years. So they had planned it and it would take them three years to complete this voyage and one leg 5000 kilometer journey passed pleasantly as we sailed down the west coast of Africa to Cape Town. So the initial part, the first part of the journey was trouble free. They were able to sail smoothly and they covered a distance of 1,5,000 km. It was a very pleasant experience for them as we sailed down the west coast of Africa to Cape Town and they were able to reach Cape Town and it was an enjoyable experience for them. It was a very pleasant journey for them and they had absolutely no trouble at all on the way. There, before heading east, we took on two crewmen. Now from till here, the weather conditions were very good. Everything went off very smoothly. The weather was very pleasant. But from now, they had anticipated that the weather conditions are not going to remain the same always. So before they moved, so there before heading east, that means before they moved eastward, we took on two crewmen. We took on means that we were joined by two crewmen. Crewmen, sailors, who were experienced sailors and they would be able to handle any situation and be a support to the couple, that is the narrator and his wife Mary. To tackle one of the world's roughest seas, to tackle that means to cope with, to handle the roughest seas that is the southern Indian Ocean. It has a reputation of being the roughest of the seas. So naturally they would need some kind of support because uh, the narrator and his wife Mary were there of course but they had small children. Uh, that is Jonathan who was six years old only and Suzanne who was seven years old. So they would not be able to. Thank you.